This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aperoa's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aperoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today with an unexpected price cut that's very welcome for all Tesla electric cars, effective immediately. The price cut ranges from a 6% reduction for the entry-level Model 3 all the way through to a massive 20% cut for the entry-level Model Y. In markets like the US, where Teslas are once again eligible for tax credits, the price cuts make Tesla models a very enticing buy from an effective sticker price point of view. Tesla says the price cuts reflect, quote, a partial normalization of cost inflation, end quote, but it's worth noting that the massive cut for Model Y may also be because Tesla recently started making 4680 standard range all-wheel drive Model Ys at Giga Texas. The stock market is less convinced, though, reacting negatively to the news over perceived disparities between production volume capacity versus demand. It is no secret that the largest electric vehicles on the market today are very heavy thanks to their massive battery packs that are used to give them long-range capabilities. But those battery packs are starting to worry safety advocates and government agencies alike thanks to that good old-fashioned formula F equals MA. The formula that shows just how much energy is present at impact when a car crashes into something else. The heavier the vehicle, the larger the impact force at a given speed. And that fact has caused Jennifer Homdi, head of US National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB for short, to warn that the growing trend towards ever larger and more powerful full-size electric SUVs and pickups, not to mention the same in internal combustion engine land, increases the risk of severe fatalities and deaths in road traffic accidents. And so far, unfortunately, statistics back that up. At last week's CES, Stellantis's truck arm Ram unveiled the Ram 1500 Revolution concept, a massive three-row full-size truck that Ram says will beat the competition. What we didn't cover at the time, though, was the robotic charging dock that was being developed to sell alongside it, because apparently people don't like plugging in. This week, EFI Automotive, who designed the robotic charging unit, detailed a little more about it, including its power levels. Essentially, the company envisages a future where robotic charging stations come and find your vehicle wherever it is parked and then inductively charge your car up at speeds of up to 7 kilowatts, with higher speed charging planned in the future. While it is a cool technology from a technology perspective, it does feel like it's tackling the wrong thing, which is more universally accessible and reliable public charging infrastructure. It's long been known that electric vehicle ownership can save you significant amounts of time long term, and every year we see plenty of new studies showing exactly that. As EV sticker prices, hopefully, trend towards the price of internal combustion engine cars, the benefits to going electric would, you'd hope, become larger. And a new study from the University of Michigan seems to show just that, detailing that for 9 out of 10 Americans, if you ignore the cost of buying the car, driving electric will still reap significant benefits. However, it also highlights the fact that the remaining 10% of households, those with the lowest income, would continue to be burdened with high transportation costs after going electric. People living in parts of the Midwest, Alaska and Hawaii are most likely to see little to no financial benefit to going electric. It shows we still have a long way to go before EVs are equitable and affordable for everyone. The Biden-Harris administration in the US has published a blueprint that it says will decarbonize the nation's transportation sector from now through to about 2050 and beyond. 
produced collaboratively by several federal agencies, including the Department of Energy, Department of Transportation, Department of Housing and Urban Development and Environmental Protection Agency. The published blueprint sets targets for emissions reductions across every sector of public transit, from personal vehicles through to rail, maritime, air travel and even off-road transportation uses. It also includes a target to reduce leaks in fossil fuel pipelines. Public transit, better urban planning and a more accessible transportation options are also covered. But as usual, a document and actual action are different things. We should measure success by results, not necessarily by paperwork. If you're an electric vehicle advocate or environmentalist, you'll likely be pleased about the global increase in electric vehicle sales as they help remove demand for fossil fuels. But in a new publication this week, the US Department of Energy's Energy Information Administration, essentially a statistical arm of the DOE, warned that oil demand will rise through 2024 to 20.63 million barrels of oil per day. That's close to record highs recorded during the mid-noughties. But the reason isn't just because of an increase in popularity of large gas guzzlers, but rather the rising consumption of oil by the petrochemical industry in its plastic production processes. Some of the plastic, of course, finds itself used in new vehicles, including EVs. Sadly, with oil-based plastics still dominant, it takes more than just buying an EV to end the supremacy of oil. There has never been more choice in the electric vehicle market than you have today, as long as you're someone who can afford the high sticker price of most new EVs. But as a Deloitte survey points out, its 2023 Global Automotive Consumer Study, there's significant inertia among consumers about switching to an electric vehicle compared to gasoline. Taking US consumers as a base, the study noted that while 8% of respondents said EVs were their preferred choice, 62% said that they were going to stick with internal combustion. Over one half of respondents, 52%, also said their biggest concern about going electric was the vehicle sticker prices, while range and charging time also featured prominently as well. Given EV prices soared last year, this is no surprise, but it shows the industry could have a hard time convincing people to dump the pump. This week, we saw more automakers publish their official sales and production figures for last year, and Volkswagen was at the top of the list, celebrating great news for EVs. In all, the company said it delivered 26% more electric vehicles in 2022 globally compared to its figures from 2021, with Volkswagen's various brands leading the electric vehicle market in Europe and claiming a number four slot in the United States. Like other legacy automakers, Volkswagen's overall vehicle sales dropped by 7% last year, but sales of EVs across the group rose from 5.1% in 2021 to 6.9% last year. While it's good to see more EVs getting sold, with Volkswagen promising high demand for electric cars on its order books for this year, it's sad to see such EV sales still accounting for single-digit percentages. It's no secret that the People's Republic of China is looking to become a global leader in electric vehicle production and deliveries. And while there are still very valid ethical concerns over buying Chinese-made vehicles, like Chinese continued violations of international human rights laws and questionable approaches to copyright law, one criticism of Chinese-made cars that we often see in the comments section relates to their perceived safety. And while it is fair to acknowledge that safety standards of Chinese-made cars used to be pretty terrible, many modern cars coming to market today are capable of meeting or beating the best crash test standards. So it's worth noting that the Aura Funky Cat, made by Great Wall Motor and now on sale in Europe, was just awarded the Euro NCAP Best in Cars Results for 2022 in the small family car category. Remember, not all Chinese-made cars fit that terrible stereotype. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car?
If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get charging and clean energy at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. When Tesla announced the redesigned Model S and Model X, along with replacing the traditional steering wheel with a yoke, there were strong opinions about the decision. Some people loved the yoke and claimed it felt like they were finally driving the future today. Others noted they had better visibility, while others bitterly complained that the yoke was harder to use on anything other than pretty straight roads, which they felt was a safety hazard. For some time now, you've been able to buy aftermarket steering wheels to replace the yoke, as well as aftermarket yokes for Teslas that didn't come with yokes. But this week, Tesla finally started to accept orders from Model S and Model X customers for a standard wheel on their new cars instead of a yoke. And for those who want to replace their existing yoke with a steering wheel, Tesla will now do that for $700. At the end of the day, you should choose the version you're most comfortable with. And finally, since I was about 10, I've always dreamt of traveling around the world on a motorcycle. And as I've got into electric vehicles, that's naturally changed to wanting to ride an electric motorcycle around the world. But as I've gotten older and the world has become less safe in some ways for LGBTQ people like me, heck, even half of the US is no longer safe for trans people anymore, I've let go of that dream. And instead, I have chosen to live vicariously through watching other people do it. So this week, I was overjoyed to hear about a new round the world trip on an electric motorcycle, courtesy of Mark from Mark's Travels on YouTube. He's got a Zero SRF, and recently he and his girlfriend Marie left to take it around the world. Having moved out of their apartment in Berlin, Germany, they are now well on their way with Mark riding the Zero and and Marie following in their rather beaten up Suzuki Jimny, the support vehicle. The great video series so far and well worth a subscribe. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV and clean energy news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched yet and you are in Aotearoa, it is high time you switch to the country's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make that switch and in doing so, you'll help wean the nation off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more awesome content, as will the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. And if you haven't already checked out his review of the LDV MIFA 9, it is high time you did. And I'll be back next weekend with our usual roundup show. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.